Over the recent years, there's been a growing trend in the leisure industry to build marinas along the southern and southwestern coastlines. As a result, many old dockyards and fishing communities have disappeared to make way for this new market. However, in almost every town where this has happened, the opinions of the local people have been divided. Some say the developers will upgrade the look of the town and aid its tourist industry. Others are in uproar, saying that such schemes will take away the very heart of their towns. In the summer of 89, I visited Exmouth in Devon, where a scheme is going ahead to transform a 125-year-old working dock into a marina with a private luxury housing development. The outcome has been the loss of up to 250 jobs and the demolition of 100 Victorian chalet houses that some people have lived in for over 30 years. I spoke to Martin Daniels of Fairfold Properties, who's going ahead with the development scheme. The development really revolves around the housing element of it, which is 434 apartments and townhouses, ranging in size from single bedroom units up to four bedroom townhouse units. I hope that certainly some local people will be interested in buying the houses because the price ranges are such that they are within the reach of most local people. What actually is the price? Price. The prices will start from about £55,000 and will actually go up to about £300,000. Jim Shapter believes the chalet is a part of Exmouth's history that should remain. Well, I was born in Exmouth and I went to school here for quite a period of my life. And uh, my family were fishing people here, or oh, generations before. So that's what I know about Expo. And now we're going up through this access that was made because a chalet was removed. And there's a sailing school there now. And we don't know what will happen about the sailing school with the development. Could be anything, we might be able to stay here, but who knows? So you, you don't know what's going to happen with your sailing school basically? No, we trust that it'll be all right. We may be able to move further along the wherever the development ceases and we shall probably have to go further down the beach I suppose. Who knows? No. And you've got no idea when they're going to start developing? Well, I believe they started now really. <laughs> you can hear it around <laughs> you. Yeah. It's uh, it's going on so we we can't really go any further than today. That's all we've got today to think about tomorrow. Hear that? Great, isn't it? Chalets being demolished like this. Very sad. It's the end of an era of the tranquil area, the prettiness, the okay. happiness that people had. All right then. And it, it's just all finished now. I used to know most of the people who lived in all of the chalets, uh, but they've all moved away now, and the only ones I know are in here now. And I usually give her a, a mackerel when I go out. Yeah. And uh, I was going to go in and give it now. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Right then. I'll knock. Good job that cat didn't come because he would have been eaten by the great dog they've got in here. <laughs> yeah, so. Come on, dear. All right. We know you're all right. Hello. Hello for me. Yes. I thank you very much. You can souse that one or... No, Whatever you like. So this young lady would like to have a chat with you. Maybe I'll come back tomorrow or something. Yeah? Tomorrow, yes, that would be all right. Okay. And I should see you when? Oh, well, same time, I suppose. Okay. Okay. I'll see you then, okay. Yeah. All right then, Ray. Okay. Thank you very much. Cheerio, love. Bye bye, love. Bye. Okay. There. She's a lovely old dear, isn't she? Yeah, she is. Right, they got to go. 
and that's the snag. So what about the people who are actually living in the chalets now? Well, certainly they will be rehoused. If their um, leases on the premises are such, they will be rehoused. Um, the, these chalets were originally constructed, of course, as holiday homes anyway, and they weren't intended for people to live in all year round. And in point of fact, it has only really been as a concession of the dock company over the years that they've permitted people to stay in them all year round. But certainly we don't want to put anyone out of house and home, and we're currently actually looking for alternative accommodation to offer to the secure tenancies on the site. It hasn't been to us at all. What is he going to do? Well, he said he wouldn't make anybody homeless. Well, we live in Alts anyway. <laughs> we just hope that he's right. But he hasn't been to see us. No, he hasn't been at all. We've had no one call here at all. Do you know where you're going to go? Don't know no a idea thing. whatsoever. Don't know a thing, Liz. Not a thing. So all we know is that we've got to have somewhere on the flat because of us both being disabled. And that's all we know. So what's it like, Rose, living down here now, oh. hearing all this going on? Horrible. <laughs> it's a nightmare, isn't it, Dad? Yes, I mean, what I can't make out is why they didn't take them down instead of bashing them up like they have. That's what I can't understand. I mean, they've, they've got to be clear. They may just as well have cleared them away and done with it. May. How do you think May is coping with things? She's not. Well, she's not really. I think the no, dear old she, lady's She's worried to death about it. It's no doubt She about can't that. think straight like us now anymore. Not really. But she's being provided for. We do know that. Have you spoken to May about yeah. Oh yes, yes, very yes, We've told her through the meeting you had, wasn't it? Yeah. And they said that May was being provided for. Len Froment has been running the local pub on the dockside for 17 years. I've had to stand back, I must admit, because, you know, I've got so many people who wanted the dock closed because of the nuisance of the dust. And I've got so many of them who was, um, you know, wanted it kept open because it was their, their employment. 50% 50, 50 would like the development to go ahead, but most of them own property around here, so I suppose it's, uh, it's self... Uh, Self-inflicted, they think their property will develop and, and go up in price. Come on, Alfred. Mm. But 50% uh, would like to see it still a working dock. Because at present it's gone down, you know, it, it's like a mortuary dead round here in the evenings in particular. At one time it used to be such a small community, a little knit community. It used to be in a part of Exmouth all of its own. But uh, towards the end the dockers just couldn't get away from here quick enough. I suppose that's inevitable really, isn't it? Change takes place. People have lost their livelihoods, you know. You've had people who have been down here for 25, 30 years working on the docks, and all of a sudden it's come to an end, and yet their working life hasn't come to an end. And they felt very bitter about it, some of them. How did you feel when you, you found out that you were going to lose, possibly lose your job as a pilot? Shattered. Absolutely. <laughs> Wouldn't you be? So you've been doing it for, you're going to be there for the rest of your life? You know, another 10 years, I'd have done me fine. I'd have retired. It's sort of halfway, you know, <clears throat> too old to get a job in 51. People don't want to know you at 51. And I thought, you know, if they'd gone for another 10 years, it'd have been fine, but that's the way it is. Because I was disappointed. Anybody would be. Your library is gone, and all of a sudden your money stops coming in. You got a mortgage to pay and things like that. So, not a, you know, not a nice thing, is it? On the 31st of December, 1989, Exmouth docks was closed, six months earlier than the proposed date. Cracks had been found in the dock basin and on the quayside, making it impossible to operate as a working dock. As a result, 50 dockers lost their jobs, along with another 200 associated dock workers. When I spoke to the dockers three months later, many of them found it unbearable to return to their workplace and talk about it, as the docks held too many memories. However, 
Gary and Ray were willing to speak to me. I've been working here 18 years. My son been here two years. Like I say, it was a lifetime, really, you know, everything. And when they closed this place, is we took part of your life away. That was it. All of a sudden, you know, it's when like somebody with a incurable illness, and he says, well, can't even work for you. I think that's what you feel like, you know. So what happened, Ray and Gary, when, when you heard the news about the docks closing? Tell me what actually happened. Well, they gave us a letter. I mean, about 19th or whatever it was from December, was it? 19th. Yeah. They said they thought we closed on the 31st of December. And that was the end of the docks. I didn't you know. even know it was shut. I just got the letter. You didn't know it. And I just took a glance at it and put it back in my pocket. And I thought it was something to do about safety helmets. You know, it's all a safety bit. I just didn't think no more about it. And then I saw my dad later on. He said, oh, the docks are shut. So I looked at my letter again, I thought, oh my god. It's a bit of a bad time as well, just before Christmas. Yeah. So how did you feel when you actually heard that you were going to lose your jobs? Gutted, really. Sick. Pretty sick. Because I was only done here a short time, but I, mean, I would have stayed down here forever, really, until I retired. I say, it took part of your life away, your family, everything, isn't it? What you've been used to. We knew it was going to come one time or another. It was always in the background that there was rumours that it was going to close, but we never believed it would. took the last ship out. That was on a, I think it was on a Sunday, wasn't it? I think, Sunday morning. It was damp, grey, rain, and the ship that we took out must have been the roughest ship we ever brought into Exmouth docks. And uh, we left here, and everybody waved, and we had the siren on the ship blowing all the time. Went out along the seafront, all the people in the flats flashing their lights on and off, because they all knew it was the last ship. And they shook hands with the skipper and said, well, Cap, you're the last one, mate. All the best. And that was it. Jumped on the pilot boat, come in. End of an era. The only thing I won't miss with the piloting is getting up 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the mornings, winter times, going out aboard ships. I won't miss that. Obviously, I'll miss the money. It was a good paying job. I miss the prestige of the job. It was a, you know, something to be proud of job. And, uh, well, I don't know. It's difficult to assess, really, because at the, when it happened, it was, I was shattered. I was really disappointed, but now I've got a new venture. So, you know, with the docks closed. So I thought, buy myself a boat, and go back there tripping again, rely on the good summers we're getting nowadays. So, you know, I bought myself up again and away I go again. Try again. Spud Rousel is a local boat builder in Exmouth. Recently, we've, through the auspices of the dock company, we've been fortunate in having some of their premises to build our larger craft because we haven't got the facilities here. As you see, there's just a straightforward sandy mm -hmm. beach. So one can't get cranes and lifting gear to handle that size of boat. And we may have to look elsewhere for premises to build bigger boats if we can't find somewhere in Exmouth to do it. Yeah. And obviously we would break because of our heritage and background, we like it here. Mm. We would like to develop those sort of premises in this area somewhere. Boat building in Exmouth uh, in the 50s used to employ 50 people. At the moment, we're the, our little company is the major employer in boats in the area. And uh, we fluctuate between eight, em eight employees to 18 at the moment. Coming down there, look. Uh, also, I was about to sharpen the scraper because... Uh, just to, uh, 
that guy in there, don't you? Well, that's going to be left by that, is it? Just saw that off, right? When I spoke to some of the fishermen in Exmouth, they were worried they might lose the right to land fish and store nets on the quayside, since the quay now belongs to Fairfell Properties. Recently, however, Fairfell Properties have assured them that they won't lose their rights and that they can continue working. At present, there are 14 boats in the fleet, a third of which are run by second and third generation fishermen. Most of the boats are owned by their skippers and bring in small quantities of fish. If the local fishing industry was to disappear, it would be the end of another tradition at Exmouth. went to Whipton Village, Exeter. Mrs. Berry went up to Brixington, was it? Uh, Burnside. Burnside. Yeah. It's a residential Lee. home, isn't it? Yeah. Well, where are you going to go? <laughs> don't ask me. We it's don't about know. time you do, isn't it? I've yeah. got no yeah, idea at all. Things, yeah. I don't think are going on, though, Jim. We just don't know. Yeah. No. We have got in contact with the council. Whether they can do anything for us, we don't know. But they can't just say, on May the 1st, you must go and find yourself bed and breakfast, can they? That's what next door's doing today. Are they? Yes. Ooh. Philip and Leslie, they've got to be out. Really? Too. Well, will they be assisted in doing that? No. So they've got to do it. Well, there. Oh, I just got Well, we just don't think anymore. has now begun. However, Fairfold properties are not continuing with the development as their backers, Alliance and Leicester, have pulled out. The dock is now back in the hands of its previous owners, Exmouth Dock Company, who have put the area back on the property market. It could be years before the land is ever developed. Thank you. 